In the rival of the best third row SUVs, Matt has given us the 2022 Honda Pilot all wheel drive in the Elite version. This is in deep scarlet pearl here at Regal in Lakeland, Florida. This goes against your Grand Cherokee L, your Mazda CX-9. New for 2022, Every pilot will receive the LED headlamps, more standard features. Honda fits that eight inch touchscreen inside with all of the connectivity because this is the elite version. No more EX or LX trim. There's gonna definitely be a price increase because of this, but if you're gonna be going against these, you have to be competitive as well. My name's Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. Honda Pilot Elite is gonna receive full LED headlamps. And I like how the chrome integrates into the assembly. LED fog lamps, and you get a touch of chrome underneath here. Non-functional vents, and this is something that I dislike because there's no purpose of it. It's just an aesthetic look, and it really does kind of alter that aerodynamic structure, especially with the way this hood is designed, because you got the four lines that just penetrate the air, brushing it off. You got the larger Honda badging in lower area with the gloss black. I do like the gloss black because it does offset that chrome. I'm not a huge fan of the chrome, but because it's the Elite, you have to give a luxury pop. Going to the lower area, you're going to get the metal look. It's going to kind of mimic a skid plate. You got the honeycomb design that's in the interior as well. So it does have a little bit of an aggressive look with the height of 70.6 inches and a width of 78.6 inches. Ground clearance, even with all that going on, is at 7.3 inches. Comparing it to the Mazda CX-9 and that Grand Cherokee L, this is gonna be a little bit more of a smaller front. It's gonna be more to the other Honda lines like your Ridgeline and your Odyssey because it's gonna share the same platform and the matte black that encases the C structure on both sides is going to go over your fenders encasing these enlarged 20 inch aluminum wheels and I like the pattern because you got the gloss black in between it the disc reading at 12.6 inches it's ventilated the rear is going to be at 13 inches a McPherson strut front suspension a multi-link rear suspension both the front and the rear will have your coil springs again the same platform as your Honda Odyssey and the Ridgeline wheelbase at 111 with the link at 196.5 inches I do like that we got a little chrome touch on the lower trim they did go a little bit more chrome than I would have liked because it's around all the window trims, but I do like the gloss that they put in between every single one. Instead of using that matte black, because what happens when you wax a car over time, it's going to start fading. With the gloss black, it doesn't do that because it's a different type of material as well, and it just holds up pretty well especially with this paint color, because it actually gives a nice sporty flare. I like the fact that the side view mirror caps are the same color as the body. Again, this is the Elite, so it's the top of the line trim. You're gonna get the silver for the roof rails. And I also like the fact that the aerodynamic lines and the proportion layouts is pretty subtle, but it just rolls all into those LED tail lights. And I like that we have a roof spoiler. It's a little bit more subtle. It's not as sporty, but you do have the shark fin in the same color as well. So they do really keep that luxury heritage and the proportion layouts is pretty subtle. They do give you that chrome on the lower trim. So it's gonna mimic some exhaust in this area here. You also have that grill pattern. The exhaust is tucked underneath and then you got the silver in between. Towing with the all wheel drive at 5,000 pounds. The front wheel drive will lower it to 3,500 pounds. I do like the fact that the parking sensors are inside it though. So that way it kind of closes them off. So it makes it easier as well. I also wish that this windshield wiper was maybe tucked underneath only because it needs to set itself away from Mazda CX-9 and Grand Cherokee L. So in order to make that more luxury, prominent look, I think that would have gave that little touch. You do have your kick to open for your cargo 
going inside to 16 cubic feet. There's storage underneath the floor and on the sides with a 12 volt charger and a spare tire. The third row bench split folds at a 50-50 going into 46 cubic feet. The second row captain seats can fold down to max that cargo to 82.1 cubic feet. The Honda Pilot packs the performance with one engine option, a 3.5 liter VTEC V6 engine producing 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque that's paired to a nine speed automatic transmission achieving 19 to 26 MPGs, a zero to 60 around 6.2 seconds with a quarter mile just under 15 seconds and a top speed at 113 miles per hour. Comparing this to that Grand Cherokee L, it's gonna have more pound feet of torque and it's gonna be faster in the zero to 60. If you're comparing it to the Mazda CX-9, that one would have a turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine. So the horsepower, 30 more horsepower is what you're getting with this. Now, as for the zero to 60, which is quicker? This one as well. So it's going to be kind of a comparison, but you know what? It's going to be really set for the ride and the interior specs plus the tech. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Honda Pilot Elite as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Honda Pilot, you're gonna receive 39.5 inches of headroom, 40.9 inches of legroom in the beige leather interior. You're gonna get 10-way power adjustment for the driver, four-way for the passenger. They're heated, they're ventilated. There's a total of 16 cup holders throughout the cabin, which is really good considering we only have seven seats. So you have to take that and really just think about how much storage that we're gonna be going through. The dash is gonna be more of the corporate Honda dash. So it's gonna be flat, derived same as the Ridgeline and the Odyssey. You have the eight inch touchscreen with navigation. So you have your pinch, you have your swipe. This has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, FM, AM, and Bluetooth connectivity with three zone climate control, rear entertainment, and you get the cabin talk. We don't have the functionality where it has the camera, so you'd have to put this down here, so that way you can see all three rows. What's going on? Moon roofs, you have one in each section, which is awesome as well. Elbows, gonna be soft. These are bucket seats, but they're more like captain seats as well. This lifts up, and you can put it down to make it more pleasurable as needed. You have your CD player down through here. You got USB 12 volt and a wireless charging pad. You shift by wire, push button for the park, reverse or drive, neutral and whatnot. Cup holders, a 16.9 ounce fits with no problem. A 32 ounce will fit also with no problem. Opening up in here to a storage tray where we got the keys. Move that aside and you'll see the 12 volt and a USB and so much storage. And I like the fact that this closes down here as well because it really utilizes a lot of storage space. As for the steering wheel, leather wrap multi-function, you got the gloss black and paddle shifters. And for your gauge cluster, it's gonna be more of a standard, but you do have a digital readout for your miles per hour. So I do like that. For the door panel, you got a soft sponge feel on the top with your blind spot monitoring inside, memory seat for the driver, one touch up and down for the front windows, two storage tiers, 32 ounce can fit in the top without any issues. And you could probably fit about five to six 16.9 ounce bottles in the bottom. So it is sufficient amount. And what you're looking at here is basically an SUV that was converted from a minivan. So when you get those capacity of storage in the front, it's awesome. Really, we need to check out that second row. For the second row, I'm at 40.9 inches of headroom, which is more than the front and 38.4 inches of legroom, which is substantial. You can adjust these forward and backwards to give optimal space to the third row, which we'll see in a second. You can also recline these just a touch because it doesn't necessarily affect the third row. Captain seats is what we're sitting with, your third climate control. You have heated seats, USB, 12 volt, HDMI. And you know what? You put this down and you got your rear entertainment that can really see for all rows for the second and third row because of where it's stationed. And I like the way it sets. You got your manual sunshades opening up here. So that way you can get some more light and you sit a little higher up as well. Cup holders start off with a 32 ounce more or less and I would say a 20 ounce in the top. And then the next tier, you could easily fit another two 16.9 ounce water bottles. It's gonna be soft on both sides here as well. You can also lift this up if you like, but it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable. You have a little storage tier here with more cup holders and storage. And again, 
16 cup holders is in this vehicle. Storage behind both of the front seats, so I do like that. And you also have this little pocket area here where you can put a small phone or the remote to that television. Let's check out that third row. For the third row, I'm at 38.9 inches of headroom, 31.9 inches of legroom. I can fit relatively fine. You do have three cup holder areas and an air vent here on the side, so it does make it a little bit more pleasurable, and you can fit probably a bunch of 32 ounce cups, so it's not really that bad. The floor is completely flat, and I do like that you have a pass-through as well. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom is the same, legroom is basically the same as well, and the nice thing is you can actually stretch out your legs like this. The disadvantage is the seats, because you have the cup holders and there's no doors back here, it makes it a little bit tighter to fit three adults my size. But the best part about it, push the button and it's easy to exit the third row. Taking the 2022 Honda Pilot Elite out for our test run. The best part about getting the Elite trim, you get all the bells and whistles. And what I mean by that is you're getting all of the safety, everything LED in the front, you'll get your wireless charger. You don't necessarily start really getting features until you step into the special edition tier. And when you get into the touring tier, that's when it really starts integrating everything else almost to the Elite Line trim. So I do like the setup. You do sit higher up as well because of that platform being shared with the Honda Odyssey and the Ridgeline. I do like that because it gives a confident feel in it. You have sufficient amount of power. Those numbers do not lie. They are faster than the Grand Cherokee L and it is faster than the Mazda CX-9 on the zero to 60. However, that is on the 3.6 liter V6 engine for the Grand Cherokee, just to note that. As for visibility in the front, you can see everything pretty easy. And I like the fact that it does that as well. So you don't really have any issues I'm giving it a little gas so we can see the power derived underneath the hood and it moves and ready to rock and roll. And that's exactly what you want out of the vehicle. The safety features is great too, because if you just touch the line, you'll feel it on the steering wheel. So Honda really does in case everything with safety. When you're driving, it soaks up all of the impurities. It's pretty quiet if you're comparing it to the other vehicles in the sense of the Honda Odyssey and the Ridgeline. You don't really hear any road noise and these are upgraded wheels. When you drive the Ridgeline, you'll actually hear a little bit more road noise, but you don't feel nothing. Turn radius, you're getting right at two lanes solid. And I mean, it's good for maneuverability. You can literally move in and out of everything. The steering does feel a little weighted, but it does have some artificial feel to it. So you're not gonna feel so much of the road. As for dynamics in it, it's not gonna be a sport type utility in the sense of like an M or anything like that. Even though the price point is around 50 to $55,000, it's still gonna be a little bit more of a settle, more of a luxury derived. And I mean, all dual pane windows all around you. So I do like that. And I mean, comparing it against the Grand Cherokee L, I like the Grand Cherokee L. I think the refresh and the, the new model was awesome. They did an excellent job. I wish I saw a little bit more tech in this one to compare against it. As for comparing it against the Mazda CX-9, that one I feel is very luxurious. It does have the inline four cylinder turbocharged engine, which a lot of people say, oh, it's underpowered. It actually has a lot of power underneath it because the torque is just immense. But the power underneath this one is good because you just downshift it, give it some gas and it goes. The only disadvantage that I've noticed with a lot of the Honda lines is it really takes more of a two and a half to three RPM for it to go. And there's no turbos. This is naturally aspirated. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike because anything more than that, I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things that I like for the luxury, I think they got it pretty much on point. Everything is soft material, so I can't complain about that. And you don't see this a lot, especially on the top of the door panel. Not gonna just go on and on and on, but even on the dash, it's a little bit more soft material. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is the fact that it drives super smooth and pleasant. Even if you have to hard brake, it's not like you're going like this. So it's very, luxurious derived for the ride. The third thing that I like about the vehicle is the storage. I mean, 16 cup holders throughout, plenty of storage compartments throughout as well. Everywhere there's just like almost a cubby more or less for you to put something and that is great, especially for a vehicle you're gonna drive on a daily basis and that's what you would do with this. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle is it lacks in the tech. The Grand Cherokee L gives you night vision. This one, it's been the same for quite a while. The second thing that I dislike is the wheel design. I wish they had a little bit more sportiness to it. 
And the last thing, again, for the appearance on the exterior, just a lot of chrome. I guess I could also say about the engine, even though you do get very quick speed, it just, it really has to hit like 3000 RPMs for it to say, okay, I'm ready to go. And then it just takes off, which is kind of weird, but as for going over impurities, perfectly fine. You can see the dynamics. It keeps it as planted as possible. Visibility, you have your blind spot monitoring, your lane keep assist. You also have your rear traffic and your frontal collision with pedestrian warning. So, I mean, you are pretty much taken care of with all the safety features. The side view mirrors are pretty big and also the steering wheel is as well. So that also makes it a lot easier to understand how long the vehicle is. It doesn't feel so long in the front. When you look through the rear view mirror, it does feel a little bit longer, but the car is pretty long more or less because this is the biggest SUV that Honda makes. We're gonna take this back to Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida, go over the reverse camera and wrap this review up. Pushing in reverse, you do have full trajectory. The lines expand and you can also click and change the camera positions to make it easy for towing and your reversing. I'd like to thank Matt here at Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida for giving us this 2022 Honda Pilot Elite for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button. Check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.